All right, everybody, welcome back. Today, we're gonna to be brewing something pretty awesome, um, and it is definitely a uh, very experimental thing for me, something very far out of my comfort zone, something I've never really tried to do before. Um, well, I have tried to do it before, and it really kind of failed, but, uh, but we're gonna take another crack at it today, and uh, that is a Belgian quad with a Christmas twist. So basically a spiced Belgian quad. It is early fall and um, it is probably really late to brew a big boozy Christmas beer because um, it may not be 100% ready by the time we actually drink it in Christmas, but eh, whatever, you know, it's about the experience. Um, so anyway, this is my recipe here. We've got um, 10 pounds of Belgian two row, uh, a pound and a half of Munich malt, a pound of special B, three quarters of a pound of aromatic malt, three quarters of a pound of Munich half a pound of melanoidin, half a pound of wheat malt, three quarter pound of table sugar, and three quarter pound of dark candy sugar. So we're sorting, sort of shooting for um, a uh, OG of about 1.091. For hops, we've got four ounces of Hallertau with a 2.6% alpha acid going in at 60. Simple bittering addition, that's it. 27.7 IBUs. And then for spices, we have a quarter teaspoon of ginger, half a teaspoon of cinnamon, an eighth a teaspoon of allspice and an eighth a teaspoon of nutmeg, all going in right before the end of the boil. I am using uh, Safale T58 Belgian uh, dry ale yeast. So I'm kind of experimenting to see like what I can get away with with dry ale yeast. Um, so people generally do use uh, liquid yeast for Belgians, but I think we'll probably be all right. Uh, we are heating our 6.25 gallons of water up to 163 degrees it just hit. Um, so now we're ready for the mash. So we're going to shoot for a mash temperature of 153 or slightly lower. Right now we're at 162. Uh, so that for about 90 plus minutes and uh, then we'll come back and drain the bag and set the boil. So in a previous video um, when I was brewing a Belgian Saison I actually did a whole spiel on how you shouldn't buy uh, Belgian candy sugar from your homebrew store because you can get away with regular simple table sugar. Basically what I said during that spiel was that you can take the light candy sugar that you get from your homebrew store and replace it with simple table sugar because um, Table sugar is made of sucrose, which is a uh, sugar that gets broken down by heat and by water, um, which happens during the boil, basically gets broken down into fructose and glucose, which are two simple sugars that are eaten by the yeast. Um, Belgian candy sugar is simply fructose and glucose um, already. It's already been broken down, so it's in theory easier for the yeast to ferment uh, without producing any byproducts. But basically, long story short is, when you put sugar in the boil um, a little bit early, like five minutes out, it will break down into those two simple sugars and you will get the same end result, uh, which I did with my Saison. However, the caveat on this is that you can only do that for light candy sugar or clear candy sugar. Um, you cannot do that and replace it with dark candy sugar. So what I have here for my Belgian Quad, which is a darker, more robust kind of beer, is actually dark candy syrup. So right here, this has um, like dark candy sugar and dark candy syrup have special compounds in them that are created 
during the caramel, like basically caramelization compounds. Um, I don't know 100% exactly how they're created, but they are different from simply subbing out other regular sugars. This adds dark uh, color to your beer, and it adds flavor. So in this situation, I recommend that you still buy the candy sugar from, or the candy syrup, from your home brew store instead of trying to substitute that with something. I think the closest substitute I can think of is either molasses or brown sugar, um, but I think you'd probably have to caramelize a little bit or something uh, to get those extra flavors. Anyway, I'm trying to be as authentic as possible with this one, so we're gonna go with the candy syrup. All right, so the mash is complete. Um, so now we're gonna take our last temperature reading here. And we are, Still rising. It's about 149. Okay. Um, so that means we lost about three degrees. So that's not bad at all. Overall, exactly still in the range that we want. So let's get this thing drained and we'll start it. So, boils just begun. We have here four ounces of Hallertauer Mizzle Fruit, um, which is about 2.6% alpha acid. So, that's why there's so much um, for a bittering addition. We're going to do about 27 IBUs. So, um, let's go ahead and put that in at our safety minutes. And, um, and we don't really do anything until about 15 minutes from the end of the boil uh, because at that point we'll start adding chiller, boil flock, etc. All right, so we have our pre-boiled OG sample right here, which is sitting pretty to about 1.067 um, gravity points, which is actually right on the money. Um, our estimated OG was one, our estimated pre-boil OG was 1.067. So now, um, once we add a bunch of sugars and boil this down, we should be able to get our gravity way up there to about 1.09. All right, so we're now 15 minutes from the end of the boil, so it is time to throw in the chili to sanitize it. As well as a healthy dose of Whirlflock, as well as a floating thermometer. All right, so then in 10 minutes, we're gonna add our spices and sugars. It is now five minutes from the end of the boil, so it's time to add our sugar and our spices. If you remember the last Belgian beer um, that I did, I talked a lot about how much spice to add, um, and it's really not that much. This is all of the spice we were adding for four and a half gallons, that's it. It is actually cumulatively, I think about a teaspoon. And a half maybe. So we are gonna dump that in now. Make sure you stir it up a little bit. So here we have three quarters of a pound each of candy sugar and table sugar. This is gonna significantly darken the wort. So add that in and scoop it out. Oh, that's not good. So apparently sitting there makes the candy sugar kind of solidify. That's gross. All right, lesson learned. Don't let your candy syrup sh sit on your candy sugar. Otherwise, it will do this. And I got to get it in there and stir it up fast before it sticks to the bottom. Oh, come on. Let me try something. See, that works. Okay, don't do what I just did. <laughs> okay, now we gotta stir it aggressively so it doesn't burn. Hopefully it doesn't burn. Oh, I'm an idiot. Okay, so 
So while I'm cooling this down, I just want to do a quick kind of overview of what the fermentation is going to look like. So we're going to basically cool it down, put it in the fermenter, and I'm going to leave it in my fridge so that it cools down to below 65-ish. Um, so probably later tonight it'll be good to go. We'll pitch the rehydrated dry yeast, uh, which again is Safale uh, T58, Belgian. Um, so basically then, we're going to ferment it uh, starting out in the lower end of the spectrum around 65 to 68 degrees for a week or so. And then we're going to slowly bring it up to over 70, um, preferably then to 70, like 72, 73 degrees um, to kind of finish out the fermentation. So what that's going to do is encourage it to fully attenuate because this beer is going to be kind of nasty if it doesn't fully attenuate. It'll be overly sweet. We don't want that. Uh, we want it to be nicely bitter, um, but also clean so that those spices come through. So like right now, this thing smells like Christmas cookies. I mean, it smells like pie. Um, but we basically want all of these spices to come through, and you can't do that if it's overly sweet. All right, anyway, um, we'll take an original gravity sample here in a minute, and then we'll ferment this thing. All right, just getting back to gas with a original gravity sample here. Looks like we're sitting just about 1.088. Uh, specific gravity, so that's it's pretty solid. Should uh, should get a nice big beer out of this one. Um, so hopefully, works out. Nice dark dark color to it as well. So. All right, so I've heavily aerated the wort and pitched the yeast. So uh, we're gonna ferment this at about 68-ish degrees for a week or so, and then start ramping it up. All right, so here we have our final gravity. Um, turned out to be about 1.016. Um, so that's about oh geez, that's about nine and a half percent alcohol. Pretty solid. Um, hopefully it turns out okay. I'm gonna age it in the bottles for probably until the holidays, uh, so probably about two months. Uh, hopefully that'll allow some of that alcohol to mellow out a bit uh, and the spices to develop some nice character. So we will see. So most Belgian beers are pretty seriously carbonated. Um, so I think the last time I made one, my Cezanne, um, I didn't do that because I had normal 12 ounce brown glass bottles that you find everywhere. Uh, so I went ahead and I, I bought some special Belgian thick walled bottles. So these are 375 milliliter bottles, so they're slightly over 12 ounces each. Um, but they are special in that they are pretty heavy and they're hefty. Um, so these things can handle a higher degree of carbonation than your standard 12 ounce brown bottle. So. From what I've researched, most of 12 ounce brown bottles can hold up to about three volumes of CO2 um, before they really start to run the risk of actually um, exploding. These guys can hold a lot more than that. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna carbonate this quad basically to uh, a good three and a half, maybe 3.75 volumes. So you get a really strong spritzy character to it that's very classic of all Belgian styles. And it should be able to handle that. So hopefully, <laughs> for the sake of my safety, hopefully it does. All right guys, so the long awaited moment has come and uh, we're gonna be tasting the beer today. So uh, this is our final result here. Uh, I ended up with a beer that has 9.6% uh, ABV, 28 IBUs. Um, so yeah, pretty strong, pretty, uh, you know, normal Belgian quad there. Ended up with a final gravity, I think, of 1.016, uh, so it's a little bit sweet, but not so much so that it's, you know, a sweet beer. It's just got a little residual sweetness that uh, hopefully balances out the incredibly high ABV. So, um, I have had a couple bottles already, uh, just as an age to make sure I knew where it was going, and I think it is just finally, and in good timing too, I think it's finally reached that point where it's um, not very harsh anymore, and um, this will only get better with age. So I called it Santa Never Left Belgium. I think that's an appropriate uh, name as it is a Belgian beer, Christmas themed, and uh, is indeed quite tasty. So, all right, here we go. So. up 
appearances are pretty straightforward and simple. I mean, it is a dark quad. The only way up to the light, you can see that it's actually a little bit more on the dark brown, like dark, dark red scale, but um, immediately it does look relatively straightforward black brown color. Um, very nice, pillowy, luscious, uh, kind of tan head to it. It's, uh, it's got solid um, head retention at the moment for something that's almost 10% ADV. Lacing is not bad either. So, um, appearances wise, did a pretty good job. It's not that hard, it's a dark beard. So, um, anyway, aroma. Oh man, that smells good. So, <laughs> I'm a bit biased because I love this beer. So we have a very, very strong kind of pear and raisin aroma that comes out of this. Uh, you take a big whiff, and um, you don't smell alcohol, you smell kind of the, the classic Belgian fruity yeast characteristic that so many people love. Um, I also get a little bit of the cinnamon uh, that I put into this, just a tiny bit, a hint. You wouldn't know it if you weren't looking for it. Um, but yeah, it's a lovely smelling beer and it actually, um, something that I notice with a lot of boozy beers is you get a kind of a very powerful alcohol. Um, note but when you sniff it but this doesn't have that really it's uh smells quite light <laughs> so anyway on to my favorite part Ooh. so <laughs> this has so many different flavors that come through and roll through your your mouth um there are so many different little complexities to this kind of beer because I put so much stuff into it. Um, so right up front, right up front, you get the yeast flavor. You get um, a decent amount of heat from the alcohol, but not booziness. Uh, just kind of a gentle heat. Uh, it's something that makes you aware that there's like a good 10% alcohol in here, but it's not... Uh, solventy, it's not sharp, it's just, you know, gentle booze, you know, you understand that it's a strong beer. So directly following that is a very powerful caramel, somewhat sweet, somewhat dry taste. Um, it is a lot of nice, oh yeah, a lot of nice pear raisin flavor that very similar to the aroma, that flavor is coming through in the middle. Mm. And it finishes very dry for what it is actually. Um, the spices come through nicely on the finish, very, very subtly, but just enough that it just complements everything perfectly. Uh, yeah. This has a very, very strong uh, depth of flavor to it. It is very deep, complex, and uh, thick. It's not, like I said earlier, it's not overly sweet. It's got a good deal of general sweetness to it, but there's enough bitterness and balance there uh, that this actually works out so well. Um, it is one of the better balanced beers that I've made, I think. Um, um, so I am very partial to Belgians because they are indeed my favorite kind of beer. And within that category, Belgian triples and Belgian quadruples are pretty much tied for my favorite kind of Belgian beer. So, having brewed my favorite kind of beer pretty much ever, it's very easy for me to say that this is the best beer that I've ever brewed. However, there's still a couple things wrong with it. So first of all, I think there is a... a I think the body is way too thick, um, so I think I should have mashed this slightly lower. That would have raised the ABV even further, but I would have gotten a little bit thinner of a body. Uh, and at this point, it is, um, it's almost stout-like in its body, so that's a little too much for me. Uh, I think Belgians should be a little bit thinner. Yeah. So number two, I don't think this actually has enough spice flavor, so I think that might be one of those things that will come out over time. I know the previous spiced Belgians I've made have had more spice flavor later on in their lives, um, but at the moment I think this could deal with uh, adding maybe another half a teaspoon of cinnamon or something because I'm not quite picking them up unless I'm really looking for them. 
Uh, at the moment, it just tastes like a standard run-of-the-mill quad, not necessarily a spiced Christmas quad. That's okay, though, um, because it's still a great beer. That's a very nitpicky comment that, you know, I, I don't think really takes away too much from the uh, the beer itself, but it's just one of my personal criticisms. As a brewer, I could have, would have liked to see a little bit more of that. Um, and also, number three, this is only going to get better with age. It is only going to improve because it is a very boozy, very large, very complex beer. So I will be doing my best to save a couple of these bottles. Um, hopefully, I can age them for a good year or so and see how that goes. Uh, hopefully, they will end up being very nice uh, and much more smooth and uh, much more complicated and interesting beers to drink in the future. Not that they're not complex or interesting right now, but um, it just these things only get better with age. So anyway, uh, my final note is that I definitely should have brewed this a little earlier in the year. So I think um, next time I make a holiday beer that's really strong like this, I'll probably push it back to like, oh, August, I'd say maybe, maybe earlier than that even, um, just so I can really hit its stride around the holidays. But anyway, this is what it is. Um, I really enjoy it. Uh, this is 100% something I'm going to brew again in the future. Absolutely. I know that for a fact. This is probably one of the best beers that I have ever brewed for myself, uh, given that it is indeed my favorite kind of beer. Um, some people will say that brewing your favorite kind of beer is dangerous because if you're a perfectionist like me, it can get pretty disappointing, um, especially if you continually let yourself down um, and don't brew the ideal beer for you. But this time I actually really did nail it. Um, I encourage you to please try hard beers, try beers that are going to be difficult to brew. Uh, they do end up making a difference in your brewing, especially when you hit the nail on the head and can really enjoy them. Every time I pull one of these bottles out of the box and know that I have a freaking Belgian quadruple at my disposal whenever I want it, a beer that's normally $9 in the store, it's actually really cool to be able to know that you did that yourself and because you wanted one or because you knew you could do it. Explore interesting styles, explore difficult, very hard beers to include your favorite kinds. So if you are like me and you are a perfectionist and you're kind of scared of brewing your favorite kinds of beer because you don't want to screw it up and disappoint yourself, don't listen to yourself. Just go ahead and do it because you're going to learn something. I mean, I held off on a quad for two years, but man, did it work out and I couldn't be happier. Well, I could probably be happier, but very largely so. I'm, I'm very happy with the way things turned out. I encourage you guys to just kind of get up and try it, you know? Why not? Why not try something crazy like a barley wine? It's fun and you learn something every time. So so I have heard rumors that the Saf Brew T58 dry yeast that I used in this is indeed the legendary Chimay Trappist Ale yeast. So just to see how close we can get to that, uh, I had indeed picked myself up a nice bottle of Chimay Blue, which is their quad, um, and is regarded by many to be the best beer in the world. Uh, so I'm certainly a big fan, I love this beer. Um, we'll do a comparison video later on once this, uh, once this ages out a little bit, so I think that'll be really interesting to see. So stay tuned for that. So if you do decide to brew this beer, please let me know in the comments below. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, and other things, uh, as long as they're civil, please drop them in the comments below. I love to hear back from you guys and let me know what you think about this. As always, if you liked this video, if you like watching me do what I do, um, feel free to please like, comment, subscribe. It helps the channel out, it helps this channel grow, and it lets me know that I'm making a big difference and um, a positive impact on people. So that's all I really want out of this. The channel doesn't make me any money, I just like to do it. So happy winter solstice holiday if you're choosing to you. I will be enjoying this beer uh, for the rest of the evening as it is indeed a sipping beer. Um, and then I'm going to unleash it upon my family and boy will that be interesting. So I hope everyone has a wonderful holiday. I will catch you next year in 2019. Until then, cheers.